Hello guys, welcome back to Design Hub. In today's video, we will go through special components of process piping, that is valves. Valves are necessary components in process plants because they regulate, direct, and control the flow of fluids, liquids, gases, and slurries, through pipes and other equipment. Each valve type performs a specific function, such as beginning or halting flow, regulating flow rate, avoiding backflow, or relieving pressure. Here's an overview of the most typical valves in process plants. Let's see what a gate valve is. Sometimes referred to as a sluice valve, it opens by raising a barrier, or gate, that blocks the fluid's flow. Gate valves need extremely little space along the pipe axis and rarely limit the flow of fluid when the gate is fully opened. Though they can be parallel, the gate faces are often wedge-shaped so that pressure can be applied to the sealing surface. Let's now examine the functions of a gate valve. Unlike globe valves, which are typically used for flow regulation, gate valves are used to stop the flow of liquids. The ordinary gate valve has relatively little flow resistance when it is fully open since there is no blockage in the flow passage. When the gate is moved, the open flow path size often changes in a nonlinear way. This indicates that there is an uneven variation in the flow rate with stem travel. Depending on the architecture, the fluid movement can cause a partially open gate to shake. Since gate valves are easier to build than other types of valves at large sizes, they are typically utilized with larger pipe diameters, from 2 inches to the largest pipelines. Friction can become an issue at high pressures. It gets tougher to operate the valve as the medium pressure pushes the gate against its guiding rail. To lower the pressure before opening the gate valve, large gate valves occasionally have a bypass that is managed by a smaller valve. In applications like heating circuits or sewer lines where a small amount of valve leakage is not a problem, Gate valves without an additional sealing ring on the gate or the seat is utilized. Next let's see what is globe valve, as opposed to a ball valve, is a kind of valve used to control flow in a pipeline. It has a stationary ring seat housed in a usually spherical body, together with a movable plug or disc element. Because of their spherical body form and internal baffle dividing their two halves, globe valves get their name. To seal, or shut, the valve, a movable plug can be placed into an opening in this to create a seat. Another name for the plug is a disc. Globe valves have a plug attached to a stem that is turned by a handwheel in manual valves to control the screw movement. Automated globe valves are usually operated by an actuator assembly and have smooth stems instead of threaded ones. Now, let's see what is a ball valve. A ball valve is a flow control device that regulates fluid flow by pivoting a hollow, perforated ball. It is open when the hole through the center of the ball is parallel to the flow inlet, and closed when the valve handle is turned 90 degrees, preventing flow. When open, the handle is flat and aligned with the flow, and when closed, it is perpendicular to it, allowing for easy visual confirmation of the valve status. The shut position could be one quarter turned clockwise or counterclockwise. The next one is a valve that typically only permits fluid, liquid or gas, to pass through it in one direction is known as a check valve, non-return valve, reflux valve, retention valve, foot valve, or one-way valve. Check valves are classified as two-port valves because they contain two ports in their bodies, one for fluid entry and one for fluid exit. Numerous check valve types are employed in a broad range of applications. Common household goods frequently have check valves. Check valves can be found in a variety of sizes and prices, but they are typically small, straightforward, and affordable. The majority of check valves are stem and handle free because they operate automatically and are not operated by humans or any external controls. The majority of check valves have plastic or metal bodies, or their external shells. Here we have a swing check valve. A swing check valve has a disc that swings on a hinge to block reverse flow or allow forward flow. The seat opening can be perpendicular or angled. Large check valves are often swing check valves and may cause water hammer issues. A butterfly check valve is not the same as a butterfly valve, instead, it functions as a check valve to halt backward flow, a butterfly valve only regulates flow in one direction. Wafer check valves regulate flow via a swinging disc. Due to their compact shape, they can be installed in locations that are too small for flanged check valves to function. The disc opening region of the wafer check valves is surrounded by molded bodies. The most significant distinction between the two types of valves mentioned above is this. Although this might initially appear to be only a space issue, the existence of a valve body as opposed to a wafer check that is stripped down significantly affects the valve's operation. There is limited space in the pipeline for the disc to open due to the flanged nature of flanged check valves. Consequently, 
flow is frequently constrained inside the swing check valve. In contrast, wafer check valves feature a molded body that allows the disc to swing fully open, enabling full flow. As you can see, if complete flow is required for your application, this is crucial. Because of this, we often recommend swing check valves when a full port valve is needed and wafer check valves for applications when flow is not a concern. There are some terminologies to keep in mind when going through a check valve. First is cracking pressure. When a consistent stream of bubbles appears at the valve's intake and output, it indicates that there is a minimum pressure differential required. Opening pressure or unseating head, pressure, are other names for cracking pressure. The second is reseal pressure. It is the pressure difference that occurs between the check valve's intake and outlet when it closes, at which point the leak rate is invisible. Sealing pressure, seating head, pressure, and closing pressure are other names for reseal pressure. Last is back pressure. Back pressure is the difference between the pressure at a fitting's output and intake or upstream location. The next one is a safety valve known as a relief valve, also called a pressure relief valve, PRV, which is used to regulate or limit the pressure within a system. If left unchecked, excessive pressure could build up and result in process disruptions, equipment or instrument failure, explosions, or fires. By enabling the pressurized fluid to exit the system through an auxiliary path, excess pressure is released. To prevent pressures over the limits of their designs from damaging pressure vessels and other equipment, the relief valve is made or programmed to open at a specific set pressure. As the relief valve is forced open and some of the fluid is redirected into the auxiliary route, it becomes the path of least resistance when the set pressure is surpassed. In systems that contain combustible fluids, the diverted fluid, liquid, gas, or liquid gas mixture, is either sent to a central, elevated gas flare where it is burned and releases unburned combustion gases into the atmosphere, or it is captured by a low-pressure, high-flow vapor recovery system. The fluid in non-hazardous systems is often released into the atmosphere via an appropriate discharge pipework that is positioned so as not to endanger personnel and is made to prevent rainwater penetration, which can alter the set lift pressure. The pressure inside the vessel will cease to rise as soon as the fluid is redirected. The valve will close when the pressure inside it reaches the receding point. The blowdown, which measures the amount of pressure that must drop before the valve reseats, is often expressed as a percentage of the set pressure. There is a 2 to 20% range in the blowdown, and certain valves have adjustable blowdowns. The distinction between a pressure safety valve, PSV, pressure release valve, PRV, or pressure relief valve, PRV, is that PSVs require a human lever to be activated in an emergency. Springs operate the majority of PRVs. Some substitute a diaphragm for a spring while operating at lower pressures. A weight is used in the first PRV designs to seal the valve. Also, there are some terminologies to keep in mind when going through safety valves. The first one is set pressure. The PRV opens when the system pressure reaches this point which is called set pressure. It is set by the maximum permissible working pressure, MAWP, of the system it is safeguarding and in order to accommodate for typical pressure variations, it is typically set at a percentage greater than the MOP. The American Society of Mechanical Engineers, ASME, may have established recommendations for the accuracy of the set pressure. The second one is the relief valve, RV. A valve that opens proportionately when rising pressure surpasses spring pressure is utilized in liquid services and can be stated as a relief valve. The third one is safety valves, SVs. Gas service uses this valve. The majority of SVs are snap acting or full lift, meaning they open all the way. The fourth one is a relief valve suitable for gas or liquid services known as a safety relief valve, SRV. But typically, the fixed pressure is only accurate for a single kind of fluid at a time. Fifth is pilot operated relief valves. These are relief valves that are activated remotely from a pilot valve that is attached to the system pressure upstream. Sixth is the low pressure safety valve, LPSV an automated mechanism that releases pressure using a gas's static pressure. There is little relieving pressure close to the atmospheric pressure. Seventh is a differential pressure. As a percentage of the set pressure, blowdown is the difference between a pressure safety valves, PSV, set pressure and reseating pressure. Eighth is a system that automatically releases pressure using a gas's static pressure known as a vacuum pressure safety valve, VPSV. The air pressure is not far from the little, negative relieving pressure. Ninth is a system that automatically releases pressure based on a gas's static pressure and is known as a low and vacuum pressure safety valve, LVPSV. The relieving pressure is close to atmospheric pressure, negligible, or positive. Tenth is a pressure vacuum release valve, 
PVRV, that combines a relief valve and vacuum pressure within a single housing. Used to stop over pressure and implosion in liquid storage tanks. The 11th is a pressure safety valve, PSV, that operates in snap acting mode and opens fully and quickly when a predefined set pressure is achieved. The 12th is modulating. When a pilot operated safety valve, PSV, modulates, it means that it can open partially and gradually to release pressure. On the other hand, in a pop action, the valve opens fully and quickly. These terminologies are very important if we are dealing with safety valves. Now let's see one miscellaneous conditions that arises in the safety relief valve. It is as follows. In some situations, equipment needs to be shielded from internal vacuums, or low pressures, that are lower than what it can tolerate. In these situations, the equipment's vacuum level is controlled by using vacuum relief valves, which open at a predefined low pressure limit and let air or an inert gas in. The next valve we will learn about is the diaphragm valve. Diaphragm valves fall into two primary categories, one that seals over a weir, saddle, and the other, which is often referred to as a full bore or straight through valve, seals over a seat. Where type diaphragm valves are typically utilized for control or throttling applications, while straight through diaphragm valves are typically used in on-off applications. Although two port diaphragm valves are the most common type, diaphragm valves can also have three ports, three halves way diaphragm valves, also known as T valves, or more, also known as block valves. Generally speaking, more than three ports call for more than one diaphragm seat. Nevertheless, certain dual actuators are able to manage multiple ports with just one membrane. One can use an automatic or manual diaphragm valve. Along with accessories like solenoid valves, limit switches, and positioners, automated diaphragm valves can be operated by pneumatic, hydraulic, or electric actuators. The next valve we will learn about is the needle valve. A needle valve is a particular kind of valve that has a threaded plunger shape like a needle with a tiny opening. Even though it can only typically handle relatively moderate flow rates, it enables fine flow modulation. Let's see its building and functioning. An instrument needle valve gradually opens a gap for precise flow control using a tapered pin. A spindle can be used to control and regulate the flow. The needle-shaped plunger on the end of a screw precisely fits the long, tapering seat of a needle valve, which has a relatively narrow opening. Fluid passage between the seat and the plunger is available as the screw is twisted and the plunger retracts, but, until the plunger is fully retracted, the fluid flow is severely hindered. Precise control over the flow rate is readily achievable because retracting the plunger requires numerous turns of the fine threaded screw. The needle valve's virtue stems from the vernier effect of the needle's length to diameter ratio, or the needle's diameter variation from the seat. A very modest and accurate shift radially, affecting the resultant flow, is produced by a long travel axially, the control input. In vacuum systems, needle valves can also be employed when precise low pressure gas flow control is needed, as in the case of filling gas filled vacuum tubes, gas lasers, and other similar devices. One example is typically, needle valves are employed in flow metering applications, particularly in situations where a low, calibrated flow rate needs to be maintained continuously for a certain amount of time, such as the idle fuel flow in a carburetor. Now, the next one is used when in order to control the flow through the valve, plug valves have cylindrical or conically tapered plugs that can be rotated inside the valve body. In plug valves, the plugs feature one or more sideways hollow tunnels that allow fluid to travel through the plug while the valve is open. Plug valves are easy to use and frequently affordable. The handle or stem is usually affixed to the end of the plug with a larger diameter when it is conically tapered. Plug valves limit or stop a system's flow by using conical and cylindrical plugs. When the cavity is parallel to the flow, the plug's central aperture permits flow through the valve, which is in the open state. The valve assembly's plug twists when the regulating lever rotates, causing the cavity to become perpendicular to the flow and stopping the flow. Quarter turns can be used to fully stop or resume flow in a plug valve. These categories include multiport, eccentric, lubricated, and non-lubricated. Now we have a butterfly valve. It is a type of valve used to control or isolate fluid flow. There's a rotating disc as the closing mechanism. The way it works is comparable to a ball valve, enabling rapid shutoff. Because they are less expensive than other valve types and require less support due to their smaller weight, butterfly valves are typically used. The disc is placed in the pipe's middle. An actuator on the outside of the valve is reached by a rod that goes through the disc. The disc can be turned to run parallel or perpendicular to the flow by rotating the actuator. In contrast to a ball valve, 
the disc creates a pressure decrease even while it is open since it is always in the flow. A butterfly valve belongs to the quarter turn valve family of valves. When the disc rotates a quarter turn, the valve is fully open or closed. On a rod, a metal disc is positioned as the butterfly. The disc is rotated to fully block the channel when the valve is closed. The disc is turned a quarter turn to permit nearly unfettered fluid circulation when the valve is fully open. To reduce flow, the valve can also be opened gradually. Lastly, we will look at the pinch valve, an abrasive, granular, or corrosive media can be controlled or shut off with a pinch valve, which is a two halves way valve. The valve can be opened or closed using pressured air. A broad variety of media can flow through the bore when the valve is in the open position, where it is unrestricted. To prevent contamination or harm to the valve's other components, the flexible internal rubber sleeve in the valve isolates the media from the rest of the valve. An elasticized reinforced rubber hose, a kind of housing, and two socket end caps, also known as flanges, make up an air-operated pinch valve. Rubber hoses for air-operated pinch valves are typically pressed into place and centered by the socket covers of the housing ends. The valve shuts off as soon as pressured air enters the body, no additional actuator is needed. The force of the process flow causes the elastic rubber hose to begin to open when the air supply is cut off and the air volume exhausts. Sand, cement, gravel, textile fiber, carbon, powder, pellets, chipping, and glass pieces are examples of granular materials and slurries that work well with pinch valves. Many industrial applications find these valves appealing since they are dependable, affordable, and simple to operate. Also, we have a manual pinch valve. A mechanism within the casing and the actuator of your choice operates the manual and control pinch valve sleeve. The mechanism consists of one or two pinch bars that are horizontally positioned above and below the sleeve, with two rods providing side guidance. Different actuators can be used with manual and control pinch valves. Pinching the sleeve horizontally, or centrally, depending on the nominal size, is accomplished by the actuator via the pinch bars. This effectively shuts off the product's flow. Furthermore, a direct connection between the sleeve and the pinch bars guarantees the best possible sleeve opening during the complete passage. Depending on the kind and nominal size, the manual and control pinch valves have a maximum operating pressure of 3 to 40 bar. In the next video, we will learn about materials. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more engineering insights. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Until then learn in advance.